Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. I hope we haven't made this problem before because that kind of looks familiar. Anyways, we have x squared minus x minus 1 to the power x squared minus x. And this is equal to 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. Not only are we going to solve for x values, I'm also going to show you a graph at the end and we'll compare our answers to what we find on the graph and we'll talk about it. Okay, great. So there's obviously more than one way to approach this problem. But one thing that I noticed is that we can use substitution. Why? Because substitution is awesome, right? As you know. So let's go ahead and call this whole thing t. That kind of turns our base into something much simpler. But not only that, if I call that t, this is just going to be 1 more than t or t plus 1. Why? Because if you set x squared minus x minus 1 equal to t and add 1 to both sides, that's what you get. Make sense? So the base and the exponent are related in a very interesting way. So we can now write this equation as t to the power t plus 1 equals 1. Oopsies, by the way, I shouldn't be using a t because I know it kind of easily confused with the plus sign. But I already did, so let's proceed with that. And I'll try not to use it. But t is one of my favorite variables, so kind of hard to give up on that. So we have t to the power t plus 1 is equal to 1, and we're going to solve for t. Couple questions. Can we find real solutions? Can we find complex solutions? Are there any complex solutions? Can we use Lambert's w function? Because that kind of looks like it, right? Whenever we have something like t to the t, we can turn it into a form where we can apply Lambert's W function. Hopefully you know that, right? Lambert's W function is something that if you apply it to y e to the y, you just get y. And I wanted to use a different variable. That's why I didn't use a t or an x here. But that's what it is. And obviously, uh, we don't always have a single answer for this. So it's a little different story. But let's see what we can do with this in normal ways. First of all, whenever you have something like this, you have to think about three cases. And those cases basically come from the fact that 1 raised to any power is 1, right? And in the real world, we're talking about what happens in the complex world. Can I get i from a power of 1? Go ahead and check out the video on my other channel, a plus bi, okay? Great. Now, but if you keep it real, then we can talk about three things. The base can be one, and we don't really care about the exponent, so we don't even need to talk about it. The second case is where the base is negative one, but then we need to have an even exponent. Because if you raise negative one to an even power, like two, four, one million, you get positive one. You should know that, right? So this and t plus one being even, and of course, when t is negative 1, this is going to be 0, so it's satisfied. So both of these solutions are good. And then the third case, which is that the third case? Let's see, is the exponent is 0. And I know some people are going to say, OK, the base should not be 0 because 0 to the power 0 is undefined. No, it's not undefined. 0 to the power 0 equals 1. It's very solid. I know some people don't want to believe that. That's fine. Go ahead and check out my video on 0 to the power 0. Okay, so from here we get t equals negative 1, but wait a minute, we already got that, so there's no need to repeat it. We got two solutions. Wait a minute, do we only have two solutions? Yes and no. This is just for t. What about coffee? Okay, anyways, you know what I'm talking about. We're going to have to back substitute, right? So let's go ahead and use these values. If t is equal to 1, what is t? x squared minus x minus 1. Remember, that's the base. And then from here, we get x squared minus x minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 equals 0. Hey, this is factorable. Nice. You should uh, be familiar with this, hopefully, if you've done a little algebra. And from here, x equals 2. And if you haven't done some algebra, this is still easy. And we got those solutions. Nice. Great. But again, uh, with exponential equations, we have to be extra careful. Why? You'll see in a little bit. Now, with the other t value that I have, negative 1, set it equal to x squared minus x minus 1. This time, you're going to add 1 to both sides. That's going to give you x squared minus x equals 0. Hey, that's also factorable. Nice. And we get the following. 
and x equals 0, x equals 1. Wow, we're getting four different solutions. Amazing, right? Okay, let's check. Now, and by the way, you could also be questioning, like, really? We only have this many solutions? Well, what do you expect? So let's go ahead and find out. For example, our original equation is x squared minus x minus 1 to the power x squared minus x. And that's supposed to equal 1, right? So if x equal to 2, if x is equal to 2, then we get 1 squared equals 1, which is good. If x is equal to negative 1, we also get 1 squared equals 1, which is good. So those are both good. If x equals 0, then negative 1 to the power 0 is 1, right? Isn't it? If x is 1, then we get, I don't know why, single arrow, negative 1 to the power 0 again. That's also 1 again. Okay, so both of these, all of these solutions, like four of them, all seem to satisfy this equation. Obviously, there are alternative ways to approach it, such as we could also look at it as follows. We have this original equation, right? And then let's go ahead and natural log both sides. Great. That's going to bring down the exponent so we can use properties of exponents x squared minus 1 multiplied by ln. So this is kind of nice because you don't have any any variables in the exponent. It's just a flat sort of equation where you have a product, right? And it's equal to 0. What else can you ask for, right? Because ln 1 is 0, at least in the real world. Or is it not always 0? Well, anyways, I don't want to talk about it because I know a lot of people are going to comment like, oh, this was a great breakthrough. Okay, anyways. So this product is 0, meaning that x squared minus 1 can be 0. That gives us x equals 1 or x equals negative 1. And then this can be 1 to make ln 1, 0. So from there, we get the exact same equation with the exact same solutions, x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. Wait a minute. That wasn't the case. What was that? x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. Um, I should be getting something different. I'm thinking. Let me see x squared minus 1 is 0, yes, and then, let's see, ta -da -da, we factor this, yeah, that's correct, okay, so this should give us x equals 2 and x equals negative 1, so, we did not get 0 from here, you know why, the problem with that is when you use ln, the argument of the ln function needs to be positive, and if x is 0, you're going to end up with something like ln of negative 1, which is not 0, which is not even well defined in the real world. So that's problematic. What do you do with that, right? Well, here's the thing. I think I messed up. Oh, there you go. Okay, okay. I see it now. Never mind. This is not x squared minus 1. It's supposed to be x squared minus x. Okay, that's where I messed up. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. If you set it equal to 0, and you're going to get 0 and 1, positive 1. And that's it. So this pretty much gives us all the solutions again. So it kind of verifies what we found. But let's go ahead and check the graph because I'm curious, right? Aren't you curious too? Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh-oh. This is the graph of y equals x squared minus x minus 1 to the power x squared minus x. And it intersects y equals 1 at only two points. Why is that happening? So here's the problem. We found four solutions, right? What were they? X equals, okay, what were the solutions? X equals 2, X equals negative 1, X equals 0, and X equals 1. So here's the problem. We can, we can see the negative 1 here, so it's good. We can see the 2 here, that's good. But these are not good because if you plug those in, they make the base negative, and the base is negative. Our exponential function goes crazy, starts jumping around like crazy, right? You're going to see a bunch of dots. That's why it's not well defined, but if it's an integer base, it should be good. But obviously, Wolfram Alpha cannot capture that, at least at this resolution, whatever. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to watch the videos on A plus B I. And bye bye.